Hello again, we're back to our lovely picture of the sheep in the orchard. Um, you can see here, um, after practicing the puddling, um, I, I've set the picture up with a certain amount of masking that I think will be relevant and help me to, to paint it well. I'm not too keen on masking fluid. Sometimes it can be really useful. Sometimes I prefer to just do without. This is the picture that I was just trying out colours on and these sheep were just um, made by using a damp brush and, and taking the sheep shapes out of the wall and I quite like it because it's sort of fairly soft and I think it works quite well. Sometimes with masking fluid the effect can be really quite harsh um, so we'll, we'll have, a, have a go and, and uh, see what this looks like. Um, the area where the blossom is um, I have put a little bit of masking fluid on because um, as we said we're going to be using the special effect of puddling but you can see there is a perspective and there are larger bits of, of blossom as you come forward and they're crossing in front of the darker tree so I've put a little bit of masking fluid on there um, to see how that works out. Um, there's a little bit of highlight across the wall which I could theoretically take out with a sharp knife later on but I'll, I've put a little bit of masking fluid on just to see how that works and there is some masking fluid across the tops um, of the backs of the sheep where you can see the sunlight is catching. Um, somebody did suggest to me that it might be easier to just paint the whole of the sheep with masking fluid, uh, which you could actually do. Uh, the problem is that sometimes I think masking fluid can be a little bit capricious and you, you know, sometimes it comes off really easily, other times it just binds with the paper and it can be a real nuisance. So if you actually covered the whole of the shapes of the sheep with masking fluid, you might end up, when you came to sort of rub it off, finding that you've got a great big old hole there where you want the sheep to be. Uh, the other thing that I think is rather nice about this picture is the, the lovely lightness of the, the yellows and the greens of the very bright sunlit grass. And um, with this one, when I was just trying, uh, trying it out, I scratched a little bit out, which would mean that the grasses are white, which isn't really um, right. What I want to do is to have some light grasses. So I put a little bit of the green on, um, yellowy green, and then put some masking fluid across the top, which means I can paint dark over and that will really uh, reveal the light grasses. Also in um, silhouette against the dark wall here you can see there are some verticals because there's a very nice um, line of uh, the sun here and you want some of these light gla grasses against um, against the wall there so that's mostly masking the other piece of masking that will be very useful and you need to bear in mind is masking in terms of protection so we're going to make the blossom effect but we want to protect the rest of the picture. So I've got an old piece of paper here and basically I'm just going to tape that down there and this down here just across the top of the wall so that I can throw paint at it to my heart's content and not have to worry about splashes or mess anywhere else. So I'm going to do some puddling here. Um, we'll fast forward it because we've already talked about that and I'll talk to you next about what we're going to do with this lovely dry stone wall.
Right, uh, you can see that that's very, very wet at the moment. Um, I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to leave the big puddles there to see what they do. If I don't like, the, like them, I can always take them out. But I'll think of this very much as a first layer and then do a bit more to it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you while we have a moment uh, was that yesterday, well, and indeed today, the weather has just been amazing. And if you're out and about, or indeed sitting in your garden with a gin and tonic or something, um, spend some time looking at the dappled sunlight. I took these few photographs, and they're literally of the pavement uh, just near where I live, and you can see that this effect of the light, uh, the shadows of the, uh, uh, the tree with the sky holes, uh, it's very much the effect that we've play been playing around with with the paddling. So you can certainly apply it elsewhere. So even if you're not actually painting, spend some time just looking at those shadows and think of different ways that you can apply this, um, this paddling technique.